So next I can start showing some of the nitty-gritty about layer functions. What I want to do with this piece specifically is I want to make a gradation in the fire from probably that tomato red to uh, more of an orange from bottom to top. To start with that, I'm going to mess around with the selection tools. So my inking layer needs to be the only layer shown. It needs to be selected over in the layers like so. My inking layer is layer number three. It's selected. So what I do is I make sure that all of my inks have closed corners so that this is registered as one complete shape. Uh, that way you can use the wand lasso tool and it will automatically select everything in the image as just a shape. So this, I, I clicked the background so it's selecting just the background. Anything in purple is something that's outside of selection. How do I fix this? I go to the select in the top left and then I hit the inverse button. So now the only thing that is selected is the shape that I wanted. After this, what I do is I add another layer and put it behind the inking layer so that the inking layer is on top. This is where the colors are going to go. It's easier to pick colors on the color wheel. I'm going to deselect highlight outside. That gets rid of the purple uh, so that I can swatch the colors that I want. So what I'm doing is I use the eyedropper tool down here and then I just clicked on whatever color I wanted. Uh, so that would be this red color that I'm selecting. Uh, and then for the radiation, it uses the two colors on this color picker. So the second color that I, um, I want it to blend to, I need to um, click so that it's the active color that I'm using uh, and then select the color that I want with the eyedropper tool. I want this to be a little bit more orangey so that it's blending like that. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to hide that layer and I will use the gradation tool, which uh, looks like a little gradation. It's underneath the fill bucket. So the gradation tool works either from the foreground to the background color. Uh, it can be just the foreground color. It can be transparent to foreground. And so that just depends on like which way you're going to be pulling the color. So from bottom to top, this will create, it will add the, um, the foreground to where you started to pull and the background will be where your pull ends up. So this is kind of backwards from how I wanted it. Maybe not. Uh, it's fun to play around. You can drag it as many times as you want until you get the desired effect. Uh, this looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Then I'm going to go back to selection and deselect the um, the shape that I was using. You can tell that it's still selected because it looks like a little dashed line following all of the edges. Uh, so I'm going to deselect that now. Uh, and then the in inner flame bits here are going to be a different gradation of color. So I'm going to add another layer. Uh, untoggle the um, orangey red gradation and then I will use the magic wand selection tool again. It helps to have highlight on outside toggled for this so that you can uh, easier it's easier to see what's going on. So uh, let me try that again. The easiest way to do this part uh, is to Use the, the freeform selection tool, uh, draw a generous vague selection here. You can add or subtract from this by using the shift and control functions. Uh, I will go back to the magic wand tool and I will hit 
you can delete areas of the selection using by holding down control when you click. So I'm control and then you press down and that selects just the bit that I want. And now I don't need the highlight outside anymore. I know that that is all that is selected. Um, so the layer that I want color on is layer 7. I'll add that there. I think the inner flames are going to be... I don't know what color I want. Um, maybe blue to yellow? I like this blue. So I switch background and foreground colors, and then I go to yellow. That's That'll be pretty neon, pretty graphical, I think. So then I go back to the gradation tool, and then I, I just pull it. That's really cool. Maybe I'll make this blue a little bit different. What if dark? Darker blue? No, that looks like Gatorade. <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the color of the 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 main body of the fire again. Uh, and this can actually be done pretty easily uh, without having to reselect or mess around with the selection tools anymore. Uh, this is a layer function called protect alpha. Uh, that way, any color that is on just that layer is all that you'll be able to mess with. You won't be able to like uh, draw outside of that layer what you've already drawn. So like uh, this works for the pen tool, it works for gradation tools, you won't be able to draw outside of that. Let me get my colors back. So this was an orange and I think this was a red but I'm going to change it to more of a pink. It's what I want. So I'll just do a gradation over that. A little bit too pink. That looks about right. And for this, I think the only reason I needed the line art was to enclose the shapes. So since I am happy with how the shapes look, and I've got my gradations down, I can just turn the inking layer off and now I have a really cool lineless flame looking thing here. Uh, the background, I'm going to do just solid black, I think. All right, so now that I have my shape done, I want to do a background. I think I'm just going to do it a solid color close to black. To do that, I make another layer and I put it behind the the layer with my colors on it so that it shows up behind there. Uh, an easy way to uh, make a solid color on the background is to just use the fill bucket tool. Um, make sure if you want to make an entire layer a solid color that when you have uh, you set the reference to the active layer and you make sure that the layer that you're putting it on is what's selected over on the right in the layer menu. Uh, so yeah, you select the fill bucket tool and you just you click it. You click the uh, screen where you want the color. And so that, that's a pretty decent color. And you can see since I selected the active layer, it didn't just fill in around the uh, the fire shape. It also filled behind it. To complete this simple illustration, I think I'm going to add a glow around the fire. 